Hey y'all, my name is Bryant Young. Hey, uh, Derek Cheney. Here with the Decent Dads Podcast, brand new episode today. Yep, with a brand new guest, uh, Nathan Carter. Yeah, man. one of my very good friends and a guy who I have been talking about on the show, and we didn't really allude to this during the show, but I've referenced Nate like three or four times oh, sure. during the podcast because he has kind of been my like North Star on how to actually be a dad because he was like one of my first friends that had kids, Yeah, and so I kind of have followed him as an example of yeah. how to be a dad, so yeah. I was very excited to have him on this week yeah and he brought you know some some great stories uh one of my favorite ones is how he talks about how managing people adult people is really not that much different than uh than parenting yeah and I, <laughs> and and all of the parallels make so much sense <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of scary but so um i think you guys are really going to enjoy this one if for absolutely. no other reason than uh nathan's here and I've got two coffees, so uh, <laughs> extra thirsty, <laughs> yeah, double fisting. Um, so uh, I guess we just jump right into it, right? Let's do it without further ado. Decent Dads Podcast. Here we go. Good evening, folks, and welcome back to the Decent Dads Podcast. We're here to tell dad jokes, drink coffee, and build a community of dads navigating fatherhood together. I'm Bryant Young, fearless leader, co-host, girl dad, and your friendly local insurance agent based out of Springfield, Missouri. And now, before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he's a six foot three sophomore shooting guard who's been hobbled in an accident. He wishes he was a first team All-American, but instead, he's the coolest co-host with the most, a fantastic father of two and the home loan expert. Folks, put your hands together and welcome the incomparable Mr. Derek Cheney. How are you, Derek? Oh man, <laughs> I've been better. I didn't know if he's going to allude to the cats uh, out of the bag to the injury or not. Um, but uh, but what yeah. injury? Well, you know, I just want to say I had some NBA aspirations um, there for a while, <laughs> and I, th- I think that's over. I think I'm going to have to retire. Cowboy, right? Terrible, yeah. That'd probably be the best job I could get from from here on out. Um, yeah, so most of you probably don't know, but uh, after we recorded our last episode... Yeah, we've been talking about basketball for several weeks now. Yeah, um, we uh, we actually had a basketball practice, and um, just us and some other old guys, and I'm out there playing, and just you know jump up just like I normally would on a normal day, and uh, pop goes my Achilles. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So luckily... We- I had a good, decent dad here and a decent friend that helped yeah. me off the court. I got took to me, be an ambulance that <laughs> took day me to and the drove hospital. him to the ER. <laughs> yeah, so you know what? That's the bad part of my weekday, but uh, the good part is, you know, we have a great guest today. Dang right we do. We have uh, Mr. Nathan Carter on here. And it's a good day for a good day. And it's a good day for a good day. Gosh, sorry, I'm a little rusty. It's all good, the brother. injury has my mind off things. You know, <laughs> I'm missing parts here. But uh but yeah, Nathan, you know, me and Bryant know you know you a little bit here. But if you will, you know, tell us who you are, what you do, give us your dad resume, tell us, you know, how many kids you got, what are their ages and which one's your favorite. Gosh. I've always wondered what this would be like, you know. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Listening, long time listener, first time guest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time. <laughs> yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah. That's, that's December-ish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's a couple of months worth of listening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Nathan Carter. Um, locally, I guess during my, during the day, I'm a CFO in the fireworks business. Mm-hmm. We import wholesale and retail nice. fireworks. He makes stuff it's go a boom. Fun business. It sounds like it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Kids think it's great. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Insurance agents, mm, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that life insurance is way up there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then outside of work, um, husband to my lovely wife Kristen mm-hmm. um, so like I you know I thought about this you know there's probably some people on YouTube right now who are like oh that's the guy I from knew the I social knew that media guy. post that his <laughs> wife makes I, I've seen him somewhere uh, but it's Kristen's yeah. post it's not his own <laughs> yeah most people know my wife Kristen because she does get around town and oh, yeah. hits all the meetings She's and Mrs. the Springfield things for and, sure. yeah so I, I don't mind being kind of the the backstage guy oh yeah um, then we got two kids mm-hmm. got a Son Beckett, that's nine, and daughter Quinn, that's seven. Oh, um, right. You ask about favorite, I tell them. Well, I used to tell them all the time that you know Quinn, you're my favorite daughter. Beckett, you're my favorite son. Oh yeah. You know, and then they hit an age where they're like, Dad, 
I'm your only son or daughter. Or whatever. <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah, yeah, all of a sudden, this, 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 it doesn't work it's, anymore. You know, <laughs> it's more of a dad joke at that point <laughs> right? that I'm not throwing out for the dad joke. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. I kids. pull that same thing on my kids. I'm like, Liam, you're my favorite three year old. Brody, you're my favorite one year old. I love it. <laughs> like, yeah. If we they s- haven't picked up on it yet. No, <laughs> and that's fine. I think that's great. I mean, and, and if we go ahead and stop at one, I'll be allowed to say Elsie is yeah. my favorite child. That's a great point. Because if we continue to you're stay on this road, I lying. won't have to lie to the yeah. poor girl. Um, yeah. I'm ex- incredibly excited that Nate's here. Um, Nathan and I have known each other for about a decade, and he has kind of been my, like, well, frankly, he's been my, okay, what the hell do I do in this situation resource several different times, whether it was with kids or with business. So I am extremely happy to have him here. Um, we do a handful of things. You know what these things are because we talk about it. Um, we'll start out with Tantrum of the Week, which... I wonder if your tantrums have gotten weirder um, now that you've got like you know crutches and a little hmm. scooter and stuff in the house. Yeah, uh, honestly, my kids have been awesome since. Good. Uh, okay. Since I, this, I, wondered. But, I, I mean, I, sure. I do. I, I mean, they they're kids, right? So they're going to have their their tantrums. Yeah. But honestly, for the most part, they've been really good. So yeah, like you mentioned there, I got uh, got this sweet boot on because my foot doesn't work like it should right now. Um, I don't mean to laugh. So I'm, I I am very <laughs> hobbled slash uh, you know partially immobile there, and so uh, Liam started uh, Happy Feet started soccer this week. Okay, and what a uh, week for soccer too. Right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, so the parents, one of the parents has to be out there and helping them. So obviously I can't do that. So Allie's out there helping him. And so I got, got my chair set up over there on the sideline and Mm -hmm. I'm holding Brody and he's, he's sitting on my lap and poor little dude, he got his, uh, uh, one year shots, uh, Uh earlier in the day. Um, and so he wasn't in a good mood anyways, because of that. And then he sees big brother out there, you know, playing soccer, kicking the soccer ball around. And so he wants to be out there and he's just losing it. And it gets to a point where I'm just like, I, I got to put this kid down. <laughs> like he's, he's getting yeah. wild, like arching the back, kicking the legs. He's like kicking my boot. And I'm like, that doesn't feel good. And so I put him down, <laughs> put him down. Not, sl- not there, not there, yeah. anywhere else but there. <laughs> right. Sure enough, he, he runs out there to the soccer field. Luckily, Allie, she, she sees him. And uh, I mean, they're not playing a game, you know, they're just doing like some drills and stuff. So yeah. it's not that big a deal. And But they have like hula hoops out there that they're doing with these drills and so Brody just grabs one he's just like shaking it trying to you know he thinks he's a pay attention to me yeah so so that gets him happy well then like Liam as we're ending soccer all the kids in happy feet they get a yellow soccer ball um and uh Liam loved it you know before the soccer game or the soccer practice well on the way out some kid brought a blue soccer ball oh no blues his favorite that's Liam's color blues his favorite color so then he melts down because he wants this blue soccer oh, ball, shit. and we're like, "Dude, that's that's not yours." First of all, <laughs> you're, you have a perfectly good one that you've only used once here, yeah, right. So yeah, we had a little double tantrum there, um, and uh, yeah, thank goodness for my wife because uh, she was a champ. Because I, again, I'm not really much help whenever they're both losing it and trying to crutch it off a soccer field. <laughs> totally get it. You're just there for you know yeah. volume, and that's kind of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm there to support you. Good job, baby. <laughs> Getting hit and kicked <laughs> I'll, and I'll screamed wave my at. Crutch but you're, over here. <laughs> you're doing awesome. You're an awesome mom. You know, uh, but uh, but yeah. That's tough, man. Yeah, Sorry that is. And that. you just that's feel tough. bad and helpless. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it sucks. Totally. Provider, uh, provider good feedback. Like, hey, you know, you know if you do it like this. Yeah. You should have zigged when you <laughs> should have zagged, and you could have avoided that, that hit to the face. Yeah, I'm sure that goes over really well yeah. just like in your household i'm, I'm sure that's like be... with your wife too like hey if you tell him like this you know he wouldn't have oh oh yeah yeah she would love that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that sounds like a great idea yeah. and then the tantrum comes from a different direction right um yeah. speaking of tantrums Elsie today um she's been a wild animal she's been bouncing off the walls way more particularly oh. to yesterday and today than she has in months I, I don't know what it is if there's something in the water um Springtime weather. I don't know, man. I guess so. She has just been bouncing off the freaking walls. And where she's home all day. And, of course, I understand I'm complaining as a dad of one child um, to dads of multiple children. And that I don't really have the multiple to really complain about. But at this point, I've got what I've got. And I'm going to complain about it. Um, Else was finally just like, you know, she started doing this thing called body slam. Where she'll just come running at you and throw herself sideways like a professional wrestler at you. WWE and she style. Goes, Bye, Sam. Wow. Bye, Sam. She says that. Bye, Sam. <laughs> I love it. Because like when if I'm laying on the ground, she'll come over and jump on top of me. Oh. Body slam. Well, that went from body slam to like getting all the way up in mom's face while like I'm cooking dinner. She and Elsie are on the couch and she like 
slams herself into Liv's face, and then is rolling around and is just so excited and so amped up, she clamps down on clamps down on Liv's shoulder Uh-oh. and bites her. <laughs> and it's the first time Liv has ever like because we don't we try our hardest not to raise our voice because she's a two year old at this point. Like, what mm-hmm. good is that really gonna do other than just scare the shit out of her? But it was the first time where I heard Liv go mostly because it hurt so bad that Liv was like, "Whoa, ow, oh, Elsie, no!" And it was like, "Oh shit!" And then of course she was immediately freaked out and felt bad Got and scared, scared. Yep. and like it was like, "Oh." And then five seconds later, she's bouncing off the walls again because she's, you know, right. a toddler and has forgotten. The, the, yeah, <laughs> it's short term memory. But that's uh, our tantrums have just not so much been tantrums as they are just like wild, feral child energy right. that's just been running around our house. And I wish I think it's just the terrible twos, right? Like that's just oh, what we'll happens during moments. the twos. Yeah. Well, that and it's like this week it's been so rainy, like they can't get outside mm-hmm. and do stuff, right? So they're stuck inside. Because I know our boys have been pretty. Pretty wild this week. Cabin too. fevery. Yeah. Yeah. So luckily the last two days we've been able to get outside and burn some of that off. So yeah, that was that was the first time that I think Elsie's heard because I've I've raised my voice once or twice as well. And so it was the first time that she's experienced that from mom's direction because mom doesn't do that. And so she, she kind of got spooked. But what about you? Do you have any tantrums this week, Nate? Our kids are kind of the same way. No, never been real big tantrum kids. Mm. But and why is we, all does all of our guests? Their kids are just not big teams. Because they're better parents yeah, than we are. our kids are. Yeah, it's because they're better parents than we are. Clearly, we My should kids be... kids are older, and then we've just put it out. Should we be doing this podcast? Yeah, right? <laughs> short short term trauma. Memory you know, loss, you're baby. just like, trauma, so you <laughs> put that someplace. The, tra- the trauma response. You yeah. just push it down. Yeah, bottled up, forget about it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, at nine and seven, all of a sudden, they are to the point where it's like everything is either they're annoyed by each other, they're annoyed by whatever it is we're doing, uh... It's, I don't know, but lately, like we went on this trip for spring break up to Santa yeah. Fe and, you know, great restaurants and things. And it's like, my kids are cultured in that they can eat chicken strips at a Mexican restaurant and they can eat chicken strips at an <laughs> Italian restaurant. Um, but if you go Sounds someplace like where all of a sudden they don't have those options, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like, this is the worst thing we could have oh, ever gosh. done to them. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> you guys eat other things. I don't know why you yeah. do this. So, I mean, they just heads down, you know, on the table. Oh God! Oh, so that's their grumpy response. Oh, just, huh? oh I'm so tired. I, oh, I, oh. <laughs> you know, and it's like, gang, you gotta eat. You right. Yeah, yeah. We're so not I eating outside I mean, of that. It, you know, this is not the flail around tantrums, but it's almost. I mean, at least as bad in some t- cases. I mean, nobody yeah. else around you notices, but it drives me. Absolutely. Well, but that's. Oh, yeah. I, I think uh, we've talked about this a lot. That the tantrums they still happen. They just change. Maybe the volume changes. Maybe the words are more involved. Because Elsie, you know, basically just yells. But your kids can like dagger you with stuff mm-hmm. if they really want to, and like yeah. those kind of tantrums, or just do things that you, n- or not do things that you know they do. <laughs> right. Like you're talking yeah. about, like eating at a restaurant. Yeah. Like I know you eat. I don't understand I why starving. we're not doing this right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, you mentioned, you know, raising <clears throat> your voice around Elsie. Yeah, yeah. I'd be curious because my kids are definitely this way. Do you get a different reaction when dad raises his voice versus when mom raises her voice? Not yeah. yet. Oh, absolutely um, in my household. This, oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah. It's. I think it's coming. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. You know I mean, at this point, Elsie just doesn't really pay attention to either of us. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. Quinn, when Kristen would get mad at her, Quinn would get mad right back. Mm-hmm. Mm. If dad yep. gets mad at her, she just falls apart. Interesting. Sobbing, crying like I hurt her feelings. Mm-hmm. Because dad got mad. Hmm. But when mom would get mad, then Quinn would get right, mad right back at her. Right. And then, I mean, I don't know. It's just a weird deal. And, but, and does Beckett have a reaction to either of you? Uh, he does. I mean, he does. He's pretty, but, he minds pretty well, though, yeah. doesn't he? But it's he, kind of the opposite. Like, he'll get frustrated with dad. Sure. He gets upset if mom gets mad at him. I get I don't that. know if it's girls and boys and, you know, yeah. I'm sure girls, there's girls, some, mom's yeah. boys kind of a thing. But I'm yeah. sure that exists. I'm sure that's part of it. Yeah, my boys, well... We haven't really noticed it too much with Brody yet, just because he's so young. But Liam, yeah, similar to what you were talking about. Like if if Allie gets on to him, then yeah, he just gets even more angry uh, when she raises <laughs> her voice. So she's had to f- figure out something else, you sure, know, to calm him down or to get her point across. But uh, but yeah, like you're saying, if I raise my voice to him, he's like, oh crap, because he's a daddy's boy, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. he doesn't want to hurt dad's feelings or make dad upset, right? So yeah, that is funny. The stuff that they pick up on it's at that age up. and and. Yeah, they're different responses, but well, yeah, that's 
perfect though. Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, no. So yeah, probably probably could use a good uh, good dad hack right about now. Dad hack alert! You know, That's right. For that so so Nate, uh, I think you have a pretty pretty good one. You was kind of talking about it a little bit a little bit before we recorded here. So what you got? Yeah, I think uh, to me for our kids, I mean we've never like baby talked them. You know, we've always so much talked to them, them like adults, mm-hmm. using adult words and adult sentences, mm-hmm. you know, other than maybe saying, you know, cup to say, you know, hey, this is a cup. So they understand yeah. that. But if we were talking about the cup, you talk <clears throat> about it. We're not saying cuppy, whoppy, <laughs> yeah. timey, wimey kind of crap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our kids, you know, have always been very articulate mm-hmm. growing up and they could then articulate what their feelings were or what Good. their issue was or you know, or if there was one in there, you know, like I said, Quinn would get real upset if I got after her or something. Mm-hmm. Then I'd, you know, get her, console her, and say, hey, talk to me. You know, mm-hmm. what is, what's going on? Right. Tell me what is wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've been able to do that. And That's so I, I don't know. I just think <clears throat> we've gotten a lot more out of our kids. Um, That's cool. Yeah. You know, because of it. So, I mean, I... I I don't know. There's probably some kind of correlation. There's probably like some professional people that listen to your show. They're like, "What an idiot!" But Ugh. you know, that's just my thought on like well, on how that works. But it, we, we we've <laughs> talked about this ad nauseum. You do what you think is right in the moment, and mm-hmm. we won't really know yep. that it's worked or it hasn't until it's 15 years, 20 years right. in the future, and at that point, it won't matter yep, anymore. It's too late at so, that point. Yep. So you do what you think is right, and and hopefully it works out. I hate baby talk. I'm in the same boat. Like I, I have a huge, like. I I don't even like the Miss Rachel thing. I love Miss Rachel, the YouTube channel. That It's this lady that's like a preschool-esque teacher but okay. has a YouTube channel. I love everything about her except for the fact that she baby talks. and It drives me insane. <laughs> and it's mostly just grating to my own ear more mm-hmm. so than it is anything else. But I do like the idea, though, that that'll help them, like, enunciate yeah. and have a better vocabulary oh, sure. because they're expo- word exposure is obviously the name of the game there right yeah well so. and then for us then it was kind of a <clears throat> then you have to remember that they're five or mm-hmm. six or four or whatever it is because they can talk right back to you yeah right and then they go and do something like a four or five year old and you're like god what an idiot yeah. oh, what are you doing? oh yeah i forgot you're a kid <laughs> now yeah. i remember yeah but maybe i don't know i that probably helps like with your tantrums too because you said they're not big tantrum throwers so no and it's probably because they can they can tell me what the heck was going on they can tell you they can express themselves you know because you've talked to them like that uh for so long so yeah i'm a i'm a big fan of that too the only bad part of that is liam definitely learned what what a penis is (laughs) recently (laughs) and so he that's his thing now he tells everybody like my parents came over uh this afternoon to see us and he had to tell them that he has a penis. Brody has a penis. Daddy has a penis. But mommy does not have a penis. And so it's Thanks because, for sharing, buddy. Yeah, right? I know. It's <laughs> just like, yeah, and my wife, she gets so embarrassed about that stuff. But it's like, again, like you're saying, like you want to talk to him like a, like a doll to use the right yeah. words and stuff. But it's like, yeah, it can backfire at times, but it's funny. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. that's a funny one. My mom, <laughs> so. One of my mom's favorite stories about me is that they were always very serious about using the anatomical names for things. Um, and, you know, when you're a little kid, your mom just sticks you in the shower with your dad, and dad ho- holds you under the shower and wrenches you off yep. real quick, and then hands you back to mom. Well, I went to preschool one day and told the teachers that I'm as tall as my dad's penis. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good for your dad. <laughs> <laughs> It's impressive, Greg. <laughs> my mom, my mother thought that was the funniest shit that she had funny. ever heard. Because the poor teacher came to her and goes, "Well, I got to tell you, your son told us something pretty interesting today." <laughs> That's good. Did you have any good? Uh, hacks? Dude, I feel like my my hacks and and my tantrums these next several weeks are just gonna revolve around my handicapness. That's all right. Uh, but yeah, so went to the went to the doctor to you know see about my ankle and. And he's like, now, he's like, I know your initial response is going to be no, because every guy's initial response is, but he's like, I'm telling you, you want one of those scooters that you can buzz around on. He's like, it's way better than crutches. It's the thing you just set your knee on top yeah, of, Yeah, yeah, right? you set your knee yeah. on, you push off with the, the other foot there, and I'm like, and I'm just kind of thinking about it through my head. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know. And he's like, he's like, I promise you, you'll like it. And he's like, you won't be embarrassing. I was like, oh, I'm not worried about being embarrassing. Yeah, I don't, don't care, care about that. I'm a dad. I was don't like, give I shit. have two little boys, though, and they're going to go nuts on this thing. That's what I'm worried about, like, if I should really have it. Uh, but anyways, I got it. And uh, it's been great. Good. You know, I've uh, been zipping around on it. But also, 
Well, one, the boys think think it's a toy, so it's a new toy for them, so it keeps them entertained quite a bit. <laughs> but then two, Liam kind of has this thing right now where when he gets out of the car, when we're in parking lots, he like wants to take off. Oh, that's which, scary. which is scary and not mm-hmm. a good thing. But if I tell him, I'm like, hey, you can ride on Daddy's scooter. You know, if you if you stand right here. So now I get on like the back half of the scooter, and he sets on the front, and he just holds on to the little handlebars, <laughs> <laughs> and we just scoot right up into the store. That's like perfect. church, we went to church this morning, did that same thing, and it, it he just stands on there the whole time, and perfect. good to go. So so nice. I mean, use your medical equipment as a distraction <laughs> for children. I, I heard, understood, yep. got it. Um, my dad hack. I we've talked about this that we're kind of starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel a little bit here. But I was flipping online, just just kind of flipping through some things, seeing if I could find something that I really liked. Um, and I saw somebody say it's kind of a one liner, two liner esque thing, but it was the idea that there's really no such thing as quality time with your kids because all time with your kids is quality time hmm. whether it's going to the coolest theme park you ever wanted to go to with them or you're sitting in the floor pushing cars around the carpet all of that time is important all of that oh, yeah. time has meaning and whether it means anything to them in the moment or not it'll still be important in the long run oh yeah and and the idea of just being in the space with them just be there with them just be there around them it doesn't have to be like every waking moment is the coolest most excitingest right sweetest thing they've ever done mm-hmm. it's more just being there with your kids spending time with your kids and i kind of like yeah. that thought process because i do feel guilty because we've had obviously when we have these dads on and they're talking about their dad experiences everybody tends to bring out their best story right or their mm-hmm. or their funniest thing and so sometimes i feel like well shit i'm not doing enough with my kid I'm, yeah. this this one dad takes his kid to wonders of wildlife like two times a month because that's their thing it's like well shit we go have pancakes sometimes but it's that t- that time is no different than the time right. that I'm talking about, where it's really just spending the time with Elsie, spending you know just being present with her yeah. is yeah. the important part. Way more than at least at this point when she's so young, way more than doing anything flashy or cool, right? Because that I just right. and again this is not an original thought. I just read that online. I was like, oh well, that that, that kind of makes me feel a little better because I have yeah. there have been several instances where I like listen to people talking. Well, we went to Disney, or well, we we've, we've done this kind of stuff, or we're doing that kind of stuff. It's like shit i'm just kind of hanging out on the floor with my kid but then that that line kind of helped me feel a little better about it she's also yeah. not even two yet so i understand that like there's not a lot of we're not taking her any theme parks <laughs> at this point uh, yeah. so and you know, i think another good way to look at that too you know the the biggest coolest moments to you might not be the biggest coolest moments to them mm-hmm. right exactly and vice versa mm-hmm. you know so yeah maybe playing in playing in the floor with the cars or the dolls whatever you know you and elsie sure. do that might be like one of her biggest highlights, you know. Oh yeah. Versus, you know, going to yeah, Wonders of Wildlife, which might be yours. You yeah, know? exactly. So, so yeah, you never know. Uh, Nate, we have talked in the past. I, I come to you to ask questions about all kinds of stuff. I alluded to it earlier. I when I started to ask you questions about like working with people and and as my dad and I start some of this transition, me taking over the agency from him, I came to you to ask some questions about managing people, and we started talking about. You didn't know, you know, managing people versus raising kids and how you felt like there are a lot of similarities. I want to have that conversation again because I think it was really good and it actually made a lot of sense. So (laughs) talk to me more about like raising people and how that helped prepare you for kids or vice versa or any of that. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's probably been almost 10 years now that I've managed people. Mm Mm-hmm. But, I mean, my son's nine. So, I mean, I started managing oh, other people sure. before we had kids. And so, you know, I didn't have that experience there. And you just kind of – I mean, I think with most jobs, you get, uh, hey, you're really good at the job, so now you're going to be the manager. Mm, right. But there's not really like a, are you good at managing other people? <laughs> yep. kind yeah, of yeah, thing. yeah. It's yeah. like you're good at your job, but we haven't tried you managing other people. Yeah. Um, and so just as our kids started to grow and as I've done this, you know, manage other people longer, mm-hmm. there's so many similarities in like how you incentivize your staff, <laughs> yeah. how you incentivize your children sure. to do things you want them to do, how you teach them lessons on like, hey, this is okay to do here, but it's not okay to do this, you know? Yeah. Like, right. Um, you know, and there's just weird stuff. I mean, you'd think, you know, you're dealing with adults, but I mean... 
Sometimes. <laughs> You'd be yeah, surprised. Sometimes, sometimes the disciplinary yeah. stuff, yeah. there's a one-to-one correlation. Yeah, I mean, things happen, and then you're like, I don't believe I would have had this conversation with my child, but I'm having it with you right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You call somebody yeah. in your office, and you're totally like, hey, get it. <laughs> we can't do yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and it's like, God, my kid knows that right. better than this. And then vice versa. So there's just a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all, to me, it's just, it's all about incentivizing, you know, how do I get you to get here? You know, you're trying to raise a child, you're trying to hit all these goals and right. things. You do right. the same thing with, sure. with staff and, you know, you're trying to incentivize them, to keep right. going and growing. And that's yeah. you're doing the same thing with kids. So it's, yeah. it's interesting, you know, as my kids get older and sure. I'm like, oh, I've dealt with this before. Right. Well, I, at work. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, and, and that's that was what I wanted to ask, or that's why I wanted to talk about this because it was so interesting. That I mean, yes, obviously the conversations change from kids to work, and and I know that even though you treat your kids like adults, you can still have you know maybe a little more frank conversation on one way or the other. But still, that made so much sense to me when we talked about it that one day at lunch. It was like, oh, yeah, that makes way too much sense. Yeah. To just. It's a, it's a training of how to lead people and how to, like you said, incentivize them. I mean, you're, you're not going to straight up pay your kids, but sometimes. <laughs> That's what an allowance is. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. Like, I, like, I bribe my kids. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I just, and I think, you know, we've had conversations about like one-on-one time, things like mm-hmm. that. And I do that with my staff. You yeah, know, I, sure. Every month, all my staff, we meet for 30 minutes to an hour. Oh, cool. I want to I get to know, like, hey, how are things? What's good? What's bad? What do you need from me? Mm-hmm. Oh, why wouldn't you do that with your kid, right? Like, why wouldn't you want good, to spend mate. some one-on-one time with your really good. your kid and say, "Hey, how's it going? What <laughs> What am I doing good? What yeah, am I what's doing up? bad? What can I work? Yeah. What's for good you? in your life? What's bad? Is there Is there something you need from me? You know, to help yeah. you out? Yeah. So you have so you're saying you have quarterly meetings with your kids, yeah. uh, re- monthly quarterly reviews, monthly, monthly, monthly reviews. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I got to thinking about that while I was thinking about coming, you know, for this, and it's like, you know, I I am I think I never really had been that intentional about it with my kids, mm-hmm. but also like, why would I be that intentional about it with people I work with yeah. and not be that intentional about it with my own family? <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. Somebody yeah. somebody who's like success. You have a a way more vested interest in. I mean, right. that's that's super important. I mean, my kids don't pay my bills yet, but okay. touche. But, but, but one hey, day. you know, <laughs> one day. when they have to start making medical decisions for you, right. you'll appreciate right. that later in life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, should you become a manager first or a parent first? Interesting. I. Mm. Well, in Nate's case, he managed people, first, and that yeah. helped him. And his, so the, and his kids don't have tantrums, so there you go. There's your answer. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm freaking answer. jealous of that. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know how the hell that happened. Yeah. Um, Chicken and egg deal. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 100%. But, but no, Nate, you were, yeah, you were, uh, I think he's about to get into it there. Yeah, uh, perfect segue. The, we didn't the, even have to do it for yeah, him. Yeah, the one on one uh, time there. Because actually, I just did that for the first time with my youngest. Um, I don't know, probably about a month ago or something. And he can't talk yet. So, you know, we weren't really having a conversation or anything like that. But that quality time that you get on one on one is huge. I mean, I don't even know what it's like, you know, for them. But as a parent, like, it was awesome to just spend that much time, that intentional time, hanging out with them. You know, yeah, we went to breakfast. We went to Wonders of Wildlife. It yep. was just me and him time. So, you know, tell, tell us a little bit more about that. You know, well, I guess, why do you do that? What are your experiences with both your kids? You know, I, I, th- I know you mentioned earlier they, they open up to you a little bit more mm-hmm. whenever, whenever you are doing one-on-one time. I'll tell you one. I mean, they act better. I don't know why. <laughs> But, but all the attention's on them. That's they don't why. Show but off. also, like, even if it's just me with both kids, for some reason, they're so much better behaved when it's oh, they're both just with one my parent? wife or they're both with oh, me. Okay, okay. I don't no know problem. Hmm. Weird deal. But I hadn't thought about huh. that. that was kind of you know early on before we had great in depth conversations. That was kind of the deal. It was like boy, they're just they act better, and, you know. Obviously, <laughs> the wife appreciates it when she's like, "Hey, you're gonna take them both. Great." I'm yeah. going to go do yeah. nothing, but I'm yeah, yeah. going to not have to deal with children for a Decompress. while. Decompress. You know, so. Oh, we do that around here, too. That is a, <laughs> mommy's going to go lock herself in her office and do her nails for a while, so Elsie and I are going to go hang out downstairs <laughs> oh, yeah. and leave her alone. <laughs> yeah. But we do, I mean, we've, well, I'll, if we have truly one-on-one, I mean, we'll go to breakfast, we'll go to dinner, we'll uh, go on hikes. Um, oh, nice. I That's like cool. to hunt. So, yeah. you know, I'll take, I've taken both kids together hunting. Uh, which is hysterical. I was going to say, how is that? How <laughs> successful time, was that hunting trip? <laughs> well, the first time I took them both, I've taken them both like bow hunting for deer. 
um, they got to see the deer real close. We didn't oh, cool. sh- take anything that night, but yeah. uh, I took them turkey hunting once, and Quinn ate every snack we had. <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> it did. was like she was a nervous eater, and I mean, just yeah. kept reaching the bag, just going for everything. She's, she's probably a really quiet eater. She too, had like right? three Unwrapping bananas, it. two apples, <laughs> and four bags of Cheetos or something. I mean, it was Holy just shit. like <laughs> cleaned house. If you want, on the bag. If you want to get your kids Munching. to eat, take money. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and then you know Beckett, I'll, I'll take him. You know, we'll play a little, play a few holes of golf or something, mm-hmm. and it's oh, just cool. it's nice because it's when it's one on one and you're not doing anything that requires a ton of their focus. Just the amount of conversation you get out of them, love uh, that. I love it. Just because yeah. they, that's cool. All of a sudden, they just start, you know, spewing. They've got to yeah. fill the void in the air, and so mm-hmm. they just start talking. And I love it because then you kind of get to know what the heck's going on up here. And which you, usually when they come home from school, I feel like. You know, it's like, hey, how, how was, was your, your day? day? Fine. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the same questions you ask him every single day. That's been something I've been happy about with the show has been hearing some of the dads and the, and, and the way that they ask that question in a different way to try and get to the root of the actual answers that they want to hear. Not, how was your day? Fine. Okay, good. Talk. Have a nice <laughs> yeah. evening. See ya. Yeah. Like, what were your highs and lows today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, those are, that, those have been some of my favorite. Like, what was the what was the greatest thing you did today, and what was the worst thing? Yep. Yeah. And I just put those kind of you know getting into their head kind of conversations just to actually meet your kids a little bit. You yeah. Know? And one of those that I've always tried to push to is like, what did you learn from it? Because mm-hmm. uh, you know a lot of times, I mean, Becca, we just did basketball, and I mean they got annihilated every game. <laughs> and I remember when I was a kid, we played in a league that was well above us early on got spanked yeah but then we were so much better after the fact oh like yeah we learned for sure what in the world it was we needed to do to play on that kind of a level yeah and so to me it's like you either win or you learn hell you yeah. don't really hell yeah that's lose. exactly right, right. um God, unless you so don't good, learn Nate. anything unless you, if you don't learn something from that experience it's your own you did lose. fall right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right if you learn something from it then you didn't really lose i mean you did but right. on the scoreboard <laughs> right right yeah i list i was listening to a ufc fighter talk and i i hate that i don't remember who it was and he said that you know sometimes i wish that i could win every fight but feel like i lost at the end of it Mm -hmm. because he got so much he Mm -hmm. felt so much pain and learned so much from losing but obviously really liked the winning part of it too but you know if he could feel like he lost at the end of every fight he would feel better about it because it was such a valuable experience to lose yeah and i love that thought process oh, yeah. absolutely love that yeah i think we, i mean we've talked about it on here multiple multiple times about how important sports are mm-hmm. for kids no matter what how good they are or anything like that i mean yeah it teaches them to lose teaches them you know how to lose and you know how to learn from it and stuff so so yeah do you have awesome. any specific stories nate i know well frankly i know you have a couple of specific stories i'm, I'm thinking of the utv story in particular with your one-on-one time because <laughs> oh. I, I i happen to because you're one of my closest friends yeah, i happen funny. to know several of these stories so i want to know about the utv because you guys have some land you were talking <clears> about hunting you guys have some dirt yeah and you guys go and ride the utv around i think you and beckett were hanging out at one point weren't you yeah and and you know beckett he's first child He's very cautious. Mm. You know, there are so many differences in my children. You know, Beckett is yep. going to walk in that room. He's going to stand there in the corner. He's going to take the whole deal in before he takes another step. Sure. Quinn's running into a room on fire yeah. and then realizes it's hot. Like, you know, that's <laughs> kind of her deal. Um, where so <laughs> Second child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just they're total opposites. So, you know, we've got this side-by-side at the farm, and Beckett and I drive it around, and... Kristen also not a risk taker. Mm-hmm. You know, two accountants. You know, I was going to say one. That also, is, you know, you were talking about how like like well spoken your kids are. It also doesn't hurt that they have rocket scientists for parents. Right. Like, well, I, yeah, you, got two, you got two CPAs <laughs> for parents. They're probably pretty sharp kids. <laughs> yeah, but Kristen not a risk taker. So know. I mean, she's been very adamant. You know, was very adamant early on. Like Beckett, you know, that speedometer does not get above seven miles an hour, mm. or whatever it was. <laughs> sure. You know, because at first before we bypassed the the deal by plug you know hitting the putting the seat belts in without actually having the seat belt on <laughs> yeah yeah you know you couldn't actually get above like six or seven miles an hour yeah she was fine with that um, yeah, that didn't bother at all <laughs> i've had toys my whole life and so yeah you know, we were i don't know this was probably he was six ish years old at the time and uh we were driving around in the side by side and i'm like hey you want to hit the water he's like oh, i don't know dad you know uh, <laughs> i don't know and 
So I'm like, okay, okay, it's fine. And then I just hammer it as we hit the river. <laughs> and I didn't, honestly, it surprised me. Because yeah. I, I did not expect that the water would turn a into a wave, wave. <laughs> that went up and over the side by side yeah. and I there was not a dry stitch on us <laughs> I mean we were soaked I just stopped right there where we were and he looks at me and his eyes are like this big and he's got the biggest smile on his face and he is cracking up so then I'm cracking up because right. I'm like okay good he's good with yeah, this as long as he's right, okay right. we're I mean, good I know we're okay this was awesome and then you get his reaction I'm like oh this was totally awesome and we laughed so hard yeah and then, yeah, as I was telling my wife about, like, I'm trying to think of, like, funny stories. What do you think? She was like, oh, yeah, I remember. And, you know, she always packs extra clothes for her and the kids because they are all a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even need my napkin at dinner because I'm usually very clean. Sure. I have no extra clothes. So <laughs> she's like, yeah, I remember. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your seat was just, like, dripping wet as we drove home from the farm because I'm the only one who doesn't have any dry clothes. And I'm <laughs> Completely soaked. That was the longest, wettest ride you've had. Right. I love that. Oh, man. <laughs> That's but, great. I mean, a ball. You know, it was one of those things that, like, when that my kids play, you know, with the, your phone and they look at your pictures, and when that picture pops, pops up, because I took a selfie of us. Oh, yeah. Beckett's like, oh, that's that time, you know, when that happens. Yeah. That's so much fun. So, that's awesome. You know, memories and things. Oh, of course. Well, and those kind of one on one times, I mean, it, he will forever remember that oh, story. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that is that is one of those like memory making experiences that are the kind of shit that's gonna make me start getting teary eyed. Like that kind of stuff is so cool. Mm -hmm. That that'll be that thing for you and your son forever. Yeah. So freaking cool. I love that. What about? I also happen to know that you and your son did some some burger hopping um, during the oh, yeah. during the, the pandemic. And burger I, I like King that. of Springfield. Yeah, the the yeah. The, the, the well, it's, it's the Burger Bar of Springfield King. Yeah. Do you have what did you guys do? Uh, you and Beckett did some one on one time during the pandemic, too, didn't you? Right. So, my daughter was not in school yet, so she was still in preschool. Wow, yeah, okay. And then, uh, God, that's been three years. That's in, what I was thinking. God, that's so weird. <laughs> Beckett was in first grade because he was midway through kindergarten whenever yeah. COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. you know, we were imagine out for the doing rest of the kindergarten year. from home. No, holy it didn't shit. Work. It, it doesn't work. work. <laughs> it doesn't work. But, tell you from personal you know, experience. That's where you know, I'm like, look, we're missing the second half of kindergarten. Your life's not going to be ruined, I don't think. I know, right. yeah. And you got a lot of years ahead of you. Right, uh, right, kindergarten yeah. was a uh, was not so much of a learning experience for him. He was ready for kindergarten. <laughs> well, the, by the time he was, yeah, <laughs> we could have sent him early. So he's got that July birthday where we could have gone uh, at at, uh, yep. at five. I was but we went those, at yep. six. Yep, I was because one of those. he yep. was. I mean, he again shy coming in, so it was like mm -hmm. he's not ready to go. Not to, gonna, like, no, not going to push him into it. That he doesn't know. Mm -mm. But um, so then we were in first grade. And Springfield Public Schools did the two days at school, three days at home thing. Okay. And so while oh. inconvenient, um, you know, I consider we were very lucky that, you know, my wife and I are both um, in a position where we could work from home. Sure. My parents lived down the street from us. Yep. So, and my mom taught second grade for 32 years. So um, we said, okay. Yeah. Kristen Helpful. takes a day. Yeah. My mom's taking a day. I got a day mm. and Quinn's back at preschool. So we were good there. Yeah. So <clears throat> my day just, I got real lucky and I got Fridays. <laughs> so, you know, Sweet. Busted all week. Yeah, yeah. You know, he and I are doing school at home, first grade school at home. And uh, I'm like, Hey, if you can get all of your stuff done, cause they would have like one zoom call in yeah. the morning, maybe two, but they were done with that by like 10 o'clock. And then they had a couple things that he had to get done worksheets mm, or whatever things, right. you know on the whatever it was on their laptops yeah and i was like hey if you can get all that done before lunch then we'll go to lunch we'll go i'll get you a burger sweet and so <clears throat> talk about remember, that bribery baby yeah, right. incentivizing That's right. <laughs> Incentives, exactly <laughs> incentivizing and so and i remember growing up when i was a kid like you know we would my dad would take us to places that might have been a little edgy you know might be what you'd call uh -huh. it yeah. um but it was great, you know. You get to go sit at the the diner bar and watch them cook mm -hmm. things, and you know, hear people say things that you probably shouldn't hear. <laughs> yep. And yep. so, I thought, you know, that's what we should do. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of great burger joints in town that maybe you're not taking the family out to on a Friday night. Sure. And so I'm like, but for Friday at lunch, they're great. So well, I mean, yeah, me and my me. son, I I think he's going where yeah. I hope he's going. Yeah. I'm just, which burger bars did you frequent, Nate? So we hit uh, 
We hit the J O B. Nice. Okay. We hit grads. Well, no, grad school wasn't open during COVID. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, we hit J O B. Mm-hmm. We hit Limburg's. We hit Galloway. Um, w F. Did you go to W F? We did do Cody's. There you go. Oh, nice. That's uh, the greatest freaking place. It is. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I was just so trying much. to think of places that we could go. I think we would have gone to Taylor's, but I don't think Taylor's was serving at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just places like that. Or I had to, you know, hit the ATM a lot because a lot of those places are cash, cash right, only, right, baby. Right, right, yeah. Oh, for but, sure. You know, I'd sit there and I'm like, hey, this is great for me. I'm gonna have food. I'm gonna have a beer. Yeah. You know, Beckett's gonna have a burger. He was. In that hog heaven, be, man. Right? But, so that's, that's a win-win. <laughs> I, I, I knew that that story was out there because I wanted to also interject that my dad did the exact same thing with me, but obviously not. It wasn't COVID-related. It was snow day-related. Mm. Ah, so that's a great idea. on snow days, when we were home, and in that day and age, obviously, you weren't doing school from home on a snow day, which they can do now, obviously. But <laughs> We haven't done it this year. <clears throat> oh, really? We've had some snow days. So, Well, so when I was a kid, snow days were – a snow day, obviously, and we were home. But dad, being an insurance guy, he had to work on those days, but always made it a point, and he would come home, and if, if he could swing it, he would come home and take either me and me and Drew to lunch, and we'd go have a cheeseburger at WF Cody's. <laughs> yeah. And my mom was a little unhappy because it was as as – Barish as it is now, in the ni- in the nineties, it was not great. <laughs> it's been around for a long time, and it was not very good in the nineties. Um, but it was that same thought process. Where, and I still to this day, I'm 34 years old, and those kind of experiences were like some of my favorite days with my dad. Yeah, was was going to the bar to have a cheeseburger with dad. Heck yeah. And it was it was one of those like oh we're doing something naughty we're right. doing something like against <laughs> something the <naughty>. rules <laughs> yeah. we're breaking the rules going to a bar this is the coolest thing man. but you're yeah. in my opinion like you're getting your kids exposed to some things uh-huh. yep. because I mean I know exactly. you're I know Elsie goes to the same preschool our yes. kids went to uh, and that literally was because you guys told us to go there yeah. uh, and that was one why thing she like, goes. we really loved about it was it was yeah. it was kids that aren't like my kids mm-hmm. right you know kids that have disabilities they got other things going on they got family problems they're Mm -hmm. you know they're not well off and things like that so frankly it's not a bunch of white kids because in springfield that's i mean that's that's a lot of springfield is a bunch of white folks and the fact that we can get her exposed to a bunch of different kinds of people in a bunch of different situations with a bunch of different things going on in their lives Mm -hmm. that was when you told me about that i was like well that's where we're going yeah Yeah. like that was so invaluable yeah Yeah. so i mean like the burger bar to me is you know kind of the same deal Mm -hmm. it's like hey we're going to take you to some places maybe you'd otherwise be like i don't know if we should go there right (laughs) it's like there's nothing wrong with this place in fact it's got a phenomenal burger yeah exactly because their cheeseburgers are fucking awesome yeah i mean personally i think they're the best in town yeah it's really really good who doesn't like a good burger but so in other words you got to get the boys over to oh yeah well i mean it's just you guys were hitting on it there but yeah i think doing as much stuff as you can to culture your children i know a couple episodes, Jeff mentioned about taking them on the city bus. Yeah, that, that was a great that's, one. Oh, yeah. That's Houghton another I did hear that. great yeah. idea, like just to give them experiences that they normally wouldn't experience, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a great idea. I'm definitely stealing that on snow days for sure. Yeah. Well, because we all have four-wheel drive vehicles, and it's not that bad. Right. Of course, unfortunately, I think our kids are going to have to also work during snow days now because they all <laughs> get sent home with laptops oh, these true, days. Maybe. Like I. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah, you I made a lot of money during snow days. Shit, I, I did too, man, for sure. Oh, Shoveled yeah. a lot of driveways and That's got a paid a bunch idea. of money. The, two, mm. the 2007 ice storm was my senior year of high school, and my buddies and I rode around in the back of a pickup truck with chainsaws and cut down a bunch of like down trees and threw them in the ditch for people and made bank. Nice. <laughs> made so much money. Nice. So Beckett is the uh, unofficial Burger King of Springfield. And I hear Quinn is the <clears throat> frog queen. Oh yeah, dude, we got we, we got to talk about Quinn because she's so, one of my favorite. So I think you have, you have a pretty good story about that, right? I mean, she, there is not a, a creature on this earth that she won't pick up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's no, fear. no fear, no fear, no <laughs> fear. I love uh, it. I mean, I've got great stories about crawdads and that frogs. has to be a second child thing. I don't know. I guess my um, my second's the same way. Oh, you know, just lay like, into it, huh? Like he doesn't care. He has no fear. Mm. Like, and I mean, I showed you guys that video before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're happy I can share. And it. we might actually put just it put YouTube it right. Or whatever. Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, t- yeah. Tell us, tell us about that story. You but know, so I mean, and, since she's been young, I mean, she just loves frogs. I mean, loves frogs, crawdads, all the things. And um, 
when we moved into our neighbor or moved into the part of our neighborhood we live in now, they were building another pool. And while they're doing that, I mean, it collects water during rainstorms and whatnot. Sure. Mm-hmm. And apparently, it collects just a shitload of frogs. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's a technical term, but I mean, it was. It was a shitload. Yeah, yeah. And it's a lot. They're everywhere. <laughs> and so, you know, she uh, the the video. I mean, you know, she's trying to catch that bullfrog, and. It, what are you going to do when you catch it? I don't know, but hold it. She didn't <laughs> yeah, think but also, far ahead. No. but now like that's another like one on one time. We'll go on like nightly walks in the summer. Oh, cool. Cause she wants to walk around the neighborhood and look for the frogs Yeah, perfect. and she'll catch them. But then when we're at the pool, you know, at night as it gets dark and the pool's about to shut down, they're everywhere. Mm. And so she'll have three, four frogs just like <laughs> collected on her arm, like a pirate. Frog whisperer. <laughs> over here. She just got all these frogs. I mean, she's even got to the point she's like chase neighbors around with them, <laughs> and so she's known in the neighborhood as like this is the girl that catches all the frogs. Oh yeah, That's well, funny. and anytime I see a frog, I text Nate and say, "Hey, send your daughter over here. Right. I've got some frogs for her to come wrangle." Yeah. I mean, when we bought the house, it was like, "Oh, Nate, we've got lizards and stuff in the backyard. Send your kid over right. here. We got some <laughs> stuff to take some care of." Lizards over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, she caught uh, a crawdad just. Uh, I guess it was last summer, the summer before. Put it in her little bucket. Yeah, goes over to Kristen's like, "Mom, I want you to look at this frog." Or this crawdad. And uh, Kristen's like, oh, okay. She gets that bucket right up to her and goes, ah! You know, and <laughs> I died. I That's thought awesome. that is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you get it. Like, God. that is a kid that gets the humor. <laughs> yes. And, I mean, she's only was only five or six at the time she did that. Oh. And I just thought, you get it. Like, that is awesome. That's she's hilarious. She, I think oh. of all, like... I cannot wait to be at her 21st birthday party. Like, if I can please get an invite to that, I think her 21st birthday party is going to be the most fun Epic. thing because she is so funny. I don't even want to think about it. God, <laughs> so funny. I, I can't s- afford an insurance policy big enough <laughs> for what, what that might have <laughs> Whatever property damage that little girl's going to do. Yeah. Oh, my god. Stick gosh. her in the middle of the field yeah. with a bunch of frogs. <laughs> exactly. Well, and it's, I, you, you hit on something that I have thought internally that I'm really excited about is seeing Elsie's sense of humor develop. Mm-hmm. And 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 it she comes into her own about like and being intentionally funny. Mm-hmm. Because she did that knowing full well that she thought that was funny and so I'm going to do this cuz I'm going to think it's funny to see yeah. mom's reaction. Yeah. I can't Elsie doesn't do that yet other than like, you know, she makes <laughs> farting noises and she thinks that's really and funny. Every kid right. thinks farts are funny. Uh, and, right. uh, uh, I mean adults do too. Let's be, let's be <laughs> so, honest. I mean, I do. My wife is like <laughs> yeah. you all are gross. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, so the fact that they all think it's funny. you're laughing <laughs> under your breath too. Don't lie. Yeah. Yeah. But it is. I'm I'm so excited to see Elsie's sense of humor develop like that because I I can't wait to see those kinds of things because inevitably she's going to be a troublemaker like her dad and frankly like her mom because her I think lives worse than I am. Um, so it's it's going to happen. But <laughs> well, yeah, that and it's funny you you mentioned this too is kids don't have any plan after their plan like Quinn when she catches the frog (laughs) what do I do now that I have it right (laughs) and it's like toddlers are the best about that and I saw a meme just the other day where it's like toddlers are like the adult version of I wonder what would happen if but they don't give a damn and they just do it and then it has this picture of this like three year old just sitting in a full five gallon paint bucket paint up to the (laughs) chest and it's like this is cool and it's like that is so true like adults aren't ballsy enough to do it but toddlers will because we don't yeah because they don't know any better they don't know the consequences well that's the thing I mean that whole uh, what is that ignorance is bliss Uh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't ever really think about that one but like to a kid that is truly it 100% they have no idea what the consequence of this (laughs) is we do so it's like well I don't do that even though it's probably fun, but I know. But I know better. And you so started I'm not to going like to. weigh some more risks on that deal, right, right? You know, it's like, uh, hey, I don't play basketball anymore because right. I don't want to blow up my right. Achilles. Ditto. Yeah, yeah, ditto. Healthy things are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Healthy things. This this damn working out thing is not good. It's not worth it. So I've alluded to the fact that you're one of my very good friends, and so I know lots of your stories anyway. But tell me about grounding your five year old. Because I'm pretty sure that's the youngest child I've ever heard that has had to be grounded. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, I, let me start it with what ages were you guys when you first got grounded? Yeah, I was I was trying to think about this because you we, we alluded to this earlier. What about you? Because I honestly was trying to think. Like I think it was – I was definitely – Early teens. I was going to say, I was definitely double digits because it's like, you know, before you hit a certain age, like, what are you going to get grounded from? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah for sure. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. You'd think. <laughs> you'd think. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah. But I think I was probably early teens. Yeah, same. I was probably like 13, 14 years yeah. old. Yeah. So my 
five or six year old, my wife and I were indefinite on the time. Um, <laughs> we come home from I don't know what, but it was early afternoon. And at the time, so we're probably talking five. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was Quinn's nap time. You know, once you pass five, you just kind of get into that point in life where, sorry to say, you run out of nap time. And yeah, I'm not looking for I am not looking forward to that. Yeah, no. I know it's out there. Yeah. I'm not looking forward and, to it. <laughs> and so, you know, Quinn was needing a nap. I mean, it was that point where it's like, it's look, I obvious. know it's beautiful outside and whatnot, but you got to have a nap. Well, as we're driving into our driveway, one of her best friends lives across the street from us, <laughs> is out playing in her yard. And Quinn's like, oh, Brennan's outside. Can I go play? It's like, no. You mm -hmm. need to go take a nap. So we come inside. I put her down. Kristen also is a napper, my wife. Um, so she goes in and lays down. Beckett, I don't even remember where he was. Whatever, it doesn't matter. That's the kind of kid he is. Yeah. He's just going to do his thing. Self-sufficient. Yeah. So while they're all napping, I that's when you know I get into you know house dad chores kind yeah. of thing, mm -hmm. and I right. start. Mm -hmm. So I start doing some laundry, and our laundry goes out to our garage. Mm. So I'm doing laundry. 20, 25 minutes later, we get a text because we're on kind of a group text with the neighbors that are all <laughs> friends, the kids and whatnot. Oh, no. Get a text from the neighbors saying, is Quinn supposed to be out? You know, it's fine. She's fine. But she mentioned something about Nap time. needing to be quiet. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said, no, she's just napping. And they're like, no, she's here playing basketball outside. And I guess she had <laughs> left her room. Did not open the front door, went downstairs into the basement, went out the back door, around the house, through the gate, across Smart the kid. street. For Remember five people, years old. this is a five-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> across the street, goes and is playing ball with the neighbors, and uh, my neighbor Lisa is outside, and Quinn goes, I had to be quiet. My dad was doing laundry. And Lisa thought that was suspicious, thank God. Yeah, right? You know. <sighs> so, needless to say, dad voice comes out. Yeah, yeah. I open the front door. And holler at Quinn, and I've already told you how Quinn reacts when Dad hollers. Yeah, yeah. So she comes in, falls apart in her room, and I go in to see my wife, and I'm like, how old were you when you got grounded? Right. Because sneaking out of the house is, eh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, That's she That's a fireable was, offense. Yeah, so. Talking about right the, <laughs> so people, people that work for you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for a week, she lost iPad and TV privileges mm -hmm. and basically came home and oh. stayed in her room all day long. Mm -hmm. but um, that's one of those situations, though. It's like, you're like kind of like impressed slash proud like you were smart enough to go all the way through the house so that i wouldn't see you right so that's one of those deals like can i gotta nip that in the butt right there right like, right we, you we gotta cannot, stop that cannot make but, this seem yeah. like oh that wasn't so bad right i could do this again because i don't know what again would look like right. and i don't want to oh god no and that's it is hysterical that she was trying to sneak out and and it at that young and is so again i've had several thoughts hearing some of these stories we're all going to be working for your kids one day like uh <laughs> they're both so freaking sharp right? it scares for me to real. death we're going to be working for both of your kids um inevitably uh <laughs> so do you have so the funny. door alarms on your do all yeah. your doors now well, I mean, you know, and that's the thing. Like, that was the other thing about the front door. We had to ring doorbell. Right. Yeah. I would have heard it buzz my phone, like, right. the second yeah. she'd have gone in front of the door. That's so why she went out the back she door. She bypassed it out the back. Right. Never crossed. But ring has the thing that you attach on the inside of the door, so anytime it opens, you get oh, a see, I don't have too. that. Yeah. yeah. But also, I mean, she didn't do it. So, I mean, she didn't go past me. Mm -hmm. She went right. downstairs, around. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> Holy knew, sort right. of. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. she knew the weak points in our skin. Yeah. <laughs> and she exploded it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Raising a little uh, Tom Cruise Mission Impossible. It's exactly here, right. right. <laughs> Going to be out here. Start playing the Mission Impossible music. Burn, yeah. burn, burn, <laughs> no, 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 no. As you think of my five year old. <laughs> right, right. Crawling through the lasers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's our next Halloween costume. Is that go, the, yeah. <laughs> the harness and everything you guys can just carry her around? <laughs> um, well, I can't believe um, that I didn't do it earlier. We missed our. Oh, um, no. Dang it. So, well, sorry, Jeff. We'll get you in on the next one. I just realized we uh, forgot to pause for our Jeff's. Um, we had Jeff. <laughs> Just we, cut it in. Like Dad X. I'm gonna I'll probably end up Just inevitably cutting it. it in. So it people are gonna be listening to this going, No, dumbass, it was in the episode <laughs> like several minutes ago. Yeah. It's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, Just black out the screen. Exactly. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> We've Nobody done it before. We've exactly. done it before. Nobody, yeah, no shit. <laughs> we have had some technical difficulties in the past. Oh, man. Um, 
But what but time is it? It's time for Dad Joke of the Week! Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, baby. So, um... Nathan's a big joke fan. He loves telling mm. jokes. It's his favorite thing in the whole world. <laughs> um, he's a really big fan. He strikes <laughs> so me as much a joker. so I'm bad at jokes. I just, <laughs> no, I just... you're not. You're a funny guy. You just don't like telling them. So much so that I'm pretty sure you got your joke from a from a special uh, source tonight. So I'm gonna put you on the spot and make you go first. I did. So Walt Quinn does have some good timing. I mm-hmm. did, I had to ask Beckett. I said, hey, because he has some, a couple joke books and things. And I said, I love it. What what's your favorite joke? Like that we've he's like I don't know any dad jokes, I said but like the ones that we laugh at right he's like but they're not dad jokes I'm like, whatever well, just just tell me a joke kid. so <laughs> it's kind of it leads in with story so guy you've done this yeah uh, gets his house painted right mm-hmm. painters come in paint his house send him the bill he says um, I notice you've only charged me for the labor you didn't charge me for any paint painter says don't worry sir it's on the house. God, it took me a minute, Nathan. <laughs> I was like, He'll what do you there. mean? He'll get oh, there. shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Beckett thinks that was a good one. Great oh. job, buddy. That's a really good joke. Well, Beckett, I'm proud of you, pal. He picks up on that. It's oh, pretty so good. Yeah, that's impressive. Nice work, Beckett. What yeah. about you? What do you got? Uh, well, it's been a few episodes ago, but you had a pretty successful duck joke. Yeah. That, yeah. that was like, for between me and you, that was one of my more favorite ones that you've had noted i'll tell Uh, i'll tell jokes about butts and ducks more often than ducks that's a whole segment (laughs) uh but yeah so my mine uh made me think of you know a good good duck joke myself good so what does the duck say when he's buying chapstick the duck say when he's buying chapstick i don't know i don't know just put it on my bill (laughs) just put it on my bill boys yeah that's good yeah All right, so there's so there's going to be a theme between me and you then, because I'm also <laughs> going to talk about an animal here. Um, what did the elephant say to the naked man? Oh gosh, my mind's going all the wrong places here. Yeah, yeah. I've heard. I think I've heard this joke <laughs> yeah, yeah. before, but I don't. I can't remember. How do you breathe through that thing? <laughs> Uncle Joe. <laughs> Uncle Joe. <laughs> I thought that one was funny. <laughs> and doesn't at all hit close to home. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Clearly it stopped with Greg. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fucker. That was good. That was good. <laughs> what a way to end the episode. Uh, Great. I love it. DC, tell us about some of our numbers. What's going on on the... Uh, on the internet yeah you know uh, well, i said you know you had a su- successful uh duck joke there so <laughs> a while back uh but uh but yeah no our numbers man it's doing great man we're picking up lots of subscribers um here recently we're getting you dangerously know. close man yeah we're at uh, i believe it says 855 there on your phone yeah um you know we God. thought it'd be super cool once we hit a thousand but we thought it'd take us forever and a day to get there. yeah but, we were uh, thinking like two years <laughs> but thanks to yeah like for real like, like, and we're less than six months in yeah so, so you know everybody that's that's listening you know we we greatly appreciate it I for mean, sure thank I mean, you we're getting the, the cool thing is, is we're getting a bunch of comments uh recently mm-hmm. on a lot of our stuff whether it's funny stuff or serious stuff you know what's working for for the uh different people and uh, what they get out of it so yeah please you know continue to like subscribe share comment you know again give us give us your guys's feedback we we definitely want to hear it yeah we definitely want the dad jokes and the dad hacks so we can ruthlessly steal them for the show oh also. for sure 100 like, percent. yeah like, we don't actually want to have to come up with stuff like you said you're kind of running out of some here yeah, so. so i don't Brian, actually Brian needs help guys yeah i don't actually want to think of anything i just want you guys to feed them to me so uh, i can just turn around and steal them ruthlessly yeah. so really i tore my achilles so i could just get some new material for I, the podcast. i kind of thought that yeah. that was why you did it um <laughs> yeah. so it's one way to do it <laughs> that is one way to do it um Anybody else got anything else? Uh, I don't think so. I think so. You got anything else that you want to talk about, big boy? We could, you and I could, we could go. Yeah, for hours <laughs> for on days. it. But, yeah. You know, there's only so much time that YouTube probably allows. I know. Right. Way to go, DC. Hey, Dad. Job. Thanks, guys. Nice work, well done, boys. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I guess we'll bring this thing to an end. So, uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Bryant Young, fearless leader. Let's try that again. That's the first time I've ever actually had to stop doing that. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Get there. <laughs> I've always wondered what this would look like. <laughs>
We actually take about forty takes, so be be prepared to stay here. All this night. is a uh, this is a rare stoppage <laughs> for us. Uh, it's a trick. <laughs> it's, a tr- it's a trap. <laughs> I do I do need a potty break this time. Okay. July it's like ninety five. <sighs> it's dry. It's the desert. Nice show. Uh, torn Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, play it up. There's the blooper. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking full of shit. Oh, Milk right that for all she's worth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.